and welcome to Sip and Stitch. Happy Friday. How's everybody doing tonight? Let's see, I got my mic on. Make sure everything's working right. Hi, Star and Norma. Hi, Lainey and Anna Kate. How's everybody doing? Um, I just wanted to uh, say good evening and welcome. My name is Carly Bell and Tonight, we are doing Sip and Stitch. And what Sip and Stitch is, is if you're new here, is every other Friday night, I like to get together with all of you for a live machine embroidery or sometimes other crafting um, projects that we do from start to finish. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. Um, I believe we might have a lot of newcomers tonight. So if you are new here, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you didn't see earlier today, uh, one of the companies that I partner with, Sewing Machines Plus, just put on a whole week worth of virtual embroidery uh, event. It, it, it was awesome. It was five days long going over all kinds of machines and products and educational classes. And I was lucky, lucky enough today to show and demonstrate my brother, Persana. Um, and I also gave a class on how to applique. So if you saw me on Hoop Fest today and came back to join tonight, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for all of my Sip and Stitch squad, thank you if you tuned into Hoop Fest to watch. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks. I got thank you for all the comments about how y'all liked Hoop Fest. I appreciate it. I was... Um, I'm always nervous. I'm nervous now. I'm just nervous. But <laughs> I also, I talk a lot and I get, I'm very excited about crafting and embroidery and everything. And so I didn't, for both of my sessions, I didn't get through everything I wanted to tell people. So um, we're going to go over some applique tonight. So if you were tuning in to my um, how to applique session earlier on Hoop Fest today, I didn't get through it all. We're going to go over a lot of applique stuff tonight. So we'll fi finish all the stuff I wanted to tell you. So yay. All right. Yay. Juanita's here because of Hoop Fest. Thank you for joining. Hey, Eartha. I know you love Hoop Fest. Thanks for watching. All right. And Cheryl is sipping and not stitching, and that is perfectly fine. So we call it Sip and Stitch. It is Friday. Um, it has been a very long week for me. I have been a crazy person all day. Um, I, uh, first off today, you know, this is my third live video with y'all. So I've been running around in here like crazy, setting everything up. But then also Elise woke up this morning with pink eye. So I had two kids home today that weren't supposed to be here and were supposed to be at summer camp. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> but she's fine now. She got some drops and that did not slow her down one bit. Um, but all this week has been crazy busy because both my daughters are in dancing and their dance recital is next week, which means their dance teacher just, just would like to have practice every night of the week. So that's what we, I've been living at the dance studio and not in my craft room where I belong. So um, one thing I didn't get done, and you may see from the, the picture of tonight's project, and I usually try to make some make the project before we start. Never had time. The most I got was just to stitch it on some stabilizer. So let's talk about tonight's project. Um, I, we are making a beach bag. So here is the bag. This is a canvas tote I ordered off of Amazon. I have the link for it down below. It comes in lots of colors. I got blue and I got red because I was supposed to stitch one ahead of time, but I didn't get to it. So we're going to do hello summer on this bag tonight. And then I might do something else fun on this one later. So this is our big bag. Okay. And this is the design we'll be stitching. So I'm going to go over these two fonts with you tonight. This is from my friend Lizzie at 
a kid's creation. So we're going to talk about her font and her lovely coupon that she offered for us. All right. Thank you, Renee. So um, that is what we're doing tonight. Now, if you're new here, I have, I'm very lucky that I have several embroidery machines. So earlier on HoopFest, I showed you my brother Persona, which is a free arm machine. And this project would work very well on that machine um, that the free arm makes it easy to do a bag. Um, this project can also be done on a flatbed machine, but depending on your hoop size, it can get difficult. Um, and, and if you want to make it as big as you want. So say you have the PE 800 and you only have that five by seven hoop. One of your options is you have the five by 12 hoop and you can split the design and do it in two hoopings, do the multi-positionable hoop. Okay. And I have a video on how to do that on my channel. It, it's, we did it. I've done it two times. I've done it as a like nice edited video. Um, that's on the shorter side, like less than 20 minutes. And then we've done it as a sip and stitch where it's, you know, it's long and it really goes you through it step by step. So you can find both of those on my YouTube channel if you have that machine and you want to do tonight's project. Um, but tonight I'm going to show you on my big boy. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do this project using an 8 by 12 hoop, which is the biggest hoop I have on my Recoma EM 1010, which is a 10 needle uh, industrial style machine. So I'm going to show you all about that machine tonight. And that's what I'm going to use to stitch my beach bag. Um, another fun thing I'm using with this is a mighty hoop and mighty hoops are really fun because they make hooping so easy. Um, I can literally just snap the hoop right where I want it and I just go. So you can also float this project. Um, if you are using your regular hoops on your machine, that is an option as well. All right. Um, okay, Cindy's asking about our good friend, Carol. So let me fill y'all in on Carol, my poor friend, Carol. <laughs> um, if you've been with me a long time, uh, our friend Carol from our Facebook group usually helps moderate our, um, our videos, right? And she's usually with us for everyone. So we had a couple unfortunate things. One was internet trouble that she hasn't had internet. But also we need to all keep Carol in our prayers because she is having surgery next month. Um, and so she has been out of commission. So everybody say a prayer for Carol that her surgery is successful and that her recovery goes really well. Okay. Um, all right. So let's dive into tonight's project. I showed you the bag. Uh, it is from Amazon. The link is down below. Now let's talk about the fonts and also the stabilizer. So um, for the bag, it's a canvas bag. It's, it's, it's good. It's sturdy and, um, and not stretchy. So I think a tearaway stabilizer is fine to use on that. Um, you could also use a cutaway if you wanted to, but I think tearaway is good. Um, the fonts we're using, these are two fonts from, uh, as I told you before, a kid's creation. And I have those linked down below. The first one with these, I like this one because it came with these extra objects that you can add on. And these are swooshes and they have the cute uh, line that goes into the heart and line. So if you wanted to connect two names with the heart in the middle, the name of the font is called I Love Glitter. Okay, so that's how I made this hello. I just... I just made the hello and then I, I moved the little swooshes right where they lined up at the end of the script of the font to make it all flow together. And then the other font is the Bailey applique, um, applique font. Okay, so this is fun because you can fill each letter with the fabric of your choice. And as you can see, I decided to do each one in a different color. So then I told you I'm using my Mighty Hoop and we're using the Recoma. Um, other things that you're gonna need, and we went over this in the applique class earlier, so I have all my pieces of fabric. I went ahead and cut them to be a little bit bigger than each letter. And we talked on Hoop Fest about heat and bond light. So usually on anything that is clothing or something I am gonna throw in the washing machine, I like to use heat and bond light on the back of my applique fabric um, for kind of one for a kind of interfacing 
And uh, there's a couple reasons for tonight's project. If you noticed, the stitching is a bean stitch. There is no satin um, stitching on this uh, font. So that means you're going to see the raw edges of your fabric. Now, if you don't want that to fray really, really easily, heat and bond light is going to prevent your fabric from fraying. Also, beach bags can get dirty. So, and this is a nice canvas bag that can be thrown in the washing machine. So if down the line, I want to throw it in the wash, um, the applique fabric won't separate and puff out from the bag because we have this heat and bond and we're going to iron it to the bag. So it's going to be nice and adhered to that canvas bag. So heat and bond light, your applique fabric of choice, and then my favorite applique scissors. So, um, and then I'm also going to be using my little mini iron, which everyone was excited about today on Hoop Fest. So links to scissors, heat and bond, mini iron, all of that can be found on the Sip and Stitch homepage, which if you go to my website, carlybell.com, you'll see in the menu bar at the top, Sip and Stitch, or you just put slash Sip and Stitch. I have a link for it down below in the um, description box. There, there's going to have a detailed list of everything I use tonight and links to it. Scissors, iron, heat and bond, um, stabilizer, the bags, the machines, the hoops, everything that I'm using tonight will be linked on that website. Okie dokie. All right. And Anne, Anne's ready to get stitches. She ordered 12 bags. <laughs> That's a great idea. All right. Okay, thank you all for the prayers for Carol. I will def I'm sure she will see it later, and I will definitely tell her next time I talk to her. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I am, let's see, let's start with in brilliance. So let's, so with any embroidery font, you are going to want embroidery software to easily use the fonts. And I love in brilliance essentials. It is a great um, basic program, but it's not basic, but it helps you do everything that you would want to do um, to get your designs personalized, resized slightly, um, change the order of the stitching, move things around. It's a great program to have. So I'm going to show you in brilliance right now. And, and the design we're doing. Okay, so right now you should see my um, and brilliant screen, and I have this yellow outline as my hoop. I already told my the program that I'm using the eight by twelve hoop, and that's the actual dimensions of it. It's slightly smaller than eight by twelve, and then this is the hello and summer. So when you purchase these fonts from a kid's um, creation, which, oh, I forgot to tell you, there is a coupon code, and I have it in the description box below, but if you use the coupon code CARLY, K-A-R-L-I-E, you will get 35% off of your purchase tonight, okay? So if you want to go get these fonts or anything else, um, use the coupon code CARLY. Let me move this over so I can see. Okay. Um, okay, so this is what we're doing. This is Hello Glitter. And then this is the Bailey um, applique font. So let's start over from scratch and let me show you how I got there. So I'm gonna make a new um, screen. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm still working in that big hoop, but you put whatever hoop it is that you're working with and then make it fit. So I'm gonna go to the font here. Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all something else. <laughs> One more thing. Um, every comment that happens tonight is going to automatically enter you in a giveaway. And Blaine from Sewing Machines Plus, um, he was texting me during Hoop Fest and he said, hey, I, wanna, I want you to have some things for you to give away tonight. So we're going to give away two sewing mats. And these are really nice mats to go either under your sewing machine or your uh, flatbed embroidery machine. So comments on YouTube and Facebook will enter you in to win. So I'm supposed to tell you that we're going to do the drawing after the show tonight. Well, when the show's towards the end. Okay, fonts. I press the font button. I get the fonts. Now I'm going to go to, I'm just going to type hello. Now it says hello. And this is a basic font that comes with in brilliance. I want to change it to I love glitter. 
which if I scroll all the way to the top. Now, um, we've done previous Sip and Stitches talking about fonts and talking about the difference between a BX font and a native font. Now, the BX fonts you can install in Brilliance and use them um, and just type. And it, and it does it, and it spaces it, and it aligns it, and it's beautiful. Um, the I Love Glitter and Bailey font are actually also considered native fonts. Now, usually I tell you don't um, resize anything more or less than 20% of the original, right? Because then the stitching can get messed up. However, with these fonts, you can resize them more or less than 20%. Because um, you notice these are two inches tall. So if you're doing something small and you want it to be one, you can resize it. Each one of these squares is one inches, right? So I want it to be about like this. But I want my letters to be connected. There's a couple options there. There is a space button here. And this either um, increases or decreases the space between the letters. So you can play with this until you get it where you want it. Oh, that looks good. Let's zoom in on that and make sure it looks good. Let's zoom in. Oh, yeah, that came out good. Sometimes I don't like the way it does it. And then I'll go and just shift one letter at a time. Like this O, I think, can go over. So I'm going to click this green dot, and now I'm just looking at the O. And I'm going to use the little cursor um, arrows on my keyboard, and I'm going to notch it over one. So that looks good to me. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back up. Uh, trying to remember what button I pressed to zoom to my hoop. Okay, so there we have hello. Now, the little extra things. I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to open up my finder window, and I'm going to go to my box, my file folder for when you uh, download I Love Glitter. It'll come as a zip file. You double click it. It unzips it. You get a folder. Um, when you open that, it says 1 inch, 1.5 inch, BX, and extras. So I installed the BX. When you go in the 1 inch or the 1.5 inch, it's going to give you each letter in each embroidery format. So if you want to pick and choose your letters and put them in your program that way, you can. And, uh, and depending on what machine or you're working with, you choose the format that goes with it. I did BX. Now the file, the folder with extras, that's going to come with a heart, double swirls, a heart apostrophe, an open heart, and swirls. So I'm clicking on swirls, and I'm going to just drag and drop my swirl. So there, there it is. Now you see it. Sorry you couldn't see all the stuff I was doing before, probably. Um, okay. So this is a swirl. And you just kind of play with it and see where it, how it fits. Like, this one looks good here, I think. So now I'm going to hit copy, paste. Now I got another swirl. Look at that. See one still there? And I want it on the O, but I think I want to flip it. So I want to flip it horizontally. And this button right here, flip horizontally. Boom. But you see how this, this swirl goes down? I think I want this one to go up. So now I'm going to flip it vertically. Flip. Now it's the, how I want. So I'm just going to go and do that. So you see how that looks? And you just move it to where it goes with your stitching. And because my letters are on the bigger side and my swirls are not, I can... Um, make those a little bigger, and then the satin stitching will match better. All right. And I could have did that before I copied it, so they would be the same, but it's okay. So there. But, on you know, we're looking at it now, and it's showing those being a kind of tan color and my hello being green. We want it all the same color, of course, right? So I can go click those swirls, click the color, and you can either choose look at threads or palette. Palette is going to show you every color you have uh, on your, your hoop right now. So I'm going to change it to the green so it matches. So there you go. Now you see how it flows. Now I'm going to click this one, click the color, click green. Okay. So now it looks all as one. However, there's one more thing you got to fix 
because if I go to my stitch simulator, I can look and see exactly how this is going to stitch out. And oh, look, it's starting with the H. You see that? It starts with the H, goes over, and then oh, it jumps way over there to the to the other swirl. I want this to stitch first, right? This, then hello, then the last swirl, right? So I'm going to go back over here. So you see I got my hello, one swirl, second swirl. I'm going to click this one, and I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to say move first. So now I have a swirl, hello, then swirl. So when I go to my stitch, stitch simulator, it starts there. Now it flows nicely. And when I save it, because I made them all the same color, when you go to your embroidery machine, it's not going to be three steps anymore. It's going to be one. Because any steps that you save in Brilliance that are the same color, it's going to merge as one step on your machine. It's not going to let you change thread colors. If you want different thread colors, make sure you have it set up like that in Brilliance before you save it. But I do want that to all stitch out in one thread color in one step. Okay. All right, let me check the chat. Um, okay, y'all are talking about installing BX fonts. Yep, it's super simple. Just double click them. You can also drag and drop them in Embrilliance. Um, I'm a drag and drop person. I'll have my little font, my little window open with all my files and I'll have my program and I just click and drag, click and drag. Okay, so we have that. Now let's do our applique alphabet. So I'm going to go back here to my font window. Now I'm going to type summer, enter, but I don't want this font. Now I want the Bailey applique font. Let's see, did I do two? I don't think it matters. Again, this is a font. Let's back up because you see it's big. That is native, so we can resize this, okay? So first off, I'm looking, there's too much space between the letters. Let me move this down. Too much space. So let's bring it closer together. And I'm going to tweak it. Because see, I like how that one is. But this one can go a little closer. Like that. Now, because I have my letters close, you're going to need to do, and because I want them to be different colors, you're going to have to do one letter at a time. Okay, we're going to make this a little smaller, and now we're going to squish it in. All right, and I did test stitch this, and it did stitch out perfectly fine, as you saw on my, um, on my stabilizer. So now I could zoom in, and you can see, hello, summer. All right, now... Let's talk about how this is going to stitch out because we talked about this in the applique class today on Hoop Fest. When you're doing applique and the, the design you're using has been digitized to be applique, you are going to get three steps for each applique. You're going to get a placement, a tack down, and a finishing or final stitch. All right. So when I go to look at colors, you'll notice I have pink, blue, green, pink, blue, green pink, blue, green. All the pinks are the placement stitches. Let me cancel that. All the blues are the tack down stitches and all the greens are the final stitch. It does not matter what it's set up in as in, in brilliance because you are going to set your colors on your machine or you're going to load your colors on your single needle machine as you go. Um, as long as it's set up to be not the same color in a row, it's going to stay separated and your machine is going to stop to allow you to do your applique steps. You want your machine to stop. All right, so that is it, guys. So we have our swirls in the right place, our hello. We connected everything. We sized it how we wanted. So now all you need to do is go to File and Save Stitch File As. Choose the format for your machine. I'm using my Recoma tonight, so that's a deep ST file. If you're using a brother or baby lock, you're going to save it as a PES file. And if you might want to come back and play around with this file again in the future, save it as a working file, and that's going to give you a .be, and that's special for Embrilliance so that you can open it up again later and play around with it. 
and save that to your USB, plug it in your machine, or if you have wireless capabilities, you can send it over. All right, so let me stop sharing. So any questions on setting up the design um, in Embrilliance? It's as easy as typing them out or dragging and dropping letters, moving things where you want them, resizing to fit your hoop, okay? All right, so now let's hoop the bag. So I am going to put you here. All right, so can you see that? All right, so this was my test stitch I just did on some stabilizer, okay? So I used that um, as a test run today and it all came out good. Oh, I never, and let me show you too. This is what we did for the um, applique class on HoopFest. I did it on the PE800. We only got as far as the frame, but I, I went ahead and finished stitching. I put um, KB on there. So I might do something fun with this and maybe put it in a wooden embroidery hoop and hang it on the wall in my craft room. So that was the finished product from the applique class today. Just a simple one piece of applique showed you how to trim it and everything. So now we have the bag. So this is my big old bag. And it doesn't have any pockets on the inside, so I don't have to worry about messing up anything. If it does have a pocket on one side, whatever bag you're stitching, stitch the other side. Some of these bags have like a flap pocket that you can actually pull up and pull out of the bag. You can do that before you hoop it so that you don't mess up that pocket. I had, I had a bag like that, but I don't know where it is right now to show you. But some have the, the pocket that you can actually pull up out of the bag and get it out your way. But um, you want to find a bag that does not have a, a sewn-in pocket on this side because you don't want to mess it up and sew that pocket close. So this one doesn't. So I went ahead and measured my bag, and it's about 18 inches wide. And then I measured from the top to the, the start of the blue, and it's about 12. So right here you can see I did a little mark earlier when I was practicing hooping it, and I'm using my disappearing ink um, fabric marker. So you can either use the blue or the, the purple. And something that works really good to get this off when you're done is water, but the Tide Pen works even better. So um, we'll do that at the end. So I have this mark here. That is the center of my bag, that is where I want the center of my design and my needle to be when I test this out on the machine, okay? So now that I, I've already marked this, you can mark it bigger too if you want. I just did a little one. Um, now we're gonna hoop it. All right. Oh, yes, Cindy said that design would be cute on a pillow. That would be. You could, there's so many fun things you could do. And there's so many fun things that you can put on a bag. You can, you can come up with your own little fun saying, or you could put your name, or you could put monograms. You can put cute little, um, I think I made a beach bag for one of my cousins that was like a, a beach ball um, with a, a name underneath it. There's like, you could do any applique on here, but I like the applique letters and then um, and make it fun. And then you can make it whatever saying you want. Um, where is my hoop? Here it is. All right. So tonight we are using the mighty hoop. This is my big giant one. It says eight by 13. However, it, the, the field is eight by 12 because that is the biggest field on my Rakoma EM 1010. Mighty hoops are super strong and they're great for bags um, for shirts, they, they really are amazing. Um, this bag could also be floated if you have the, um, the frames. However, most of those easy frames, fast frames, the eight in one device that comes with the uh, Rakoma, um, they don't make frames this big. The biggest frame is usually five by seven or eight by eight. So you would need to use either the hoop that comes with the machine or in my case, the Mighty Hoop if you're stitching something this big. All right, so super strong, two pieces, like that. And they're magnets, so as with any magnets, things you gotta watch out for. Don't put it by your phone. Don't put it by your computer. <laughs> if you have a pacemaker, don't get one. 
very strong magnet. So, okay, so I took the top off. Now I have just the bottom. I'm gonna slide that in my bag, okay? Just slide it in for now. Then I'm also gonna take a piece of tear away stabilizer. This is some of the pre-cut Stay Perfect stabilizer. I have to look at the bag to see what size it is, but it is absolutely perfect for my eight by 12 hoop. It fits it perfectly. It's just like just right and big enough. So now with Mighty Hoops, you have lots of options. There are these special backing holders you can get. There are hooping stations you can get. However, it also works perfectly fine by just putting the stabilizer in yourself like that. Okay, now's the tricky part. Now I'm just feeling because like I can feel the inside here. And now I need to feel to make sure this is this mark is in the center. So earlier when I was practicing, I needed the top of my hoop to actually be here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing to have enough space on this side and enough space, this space and this space is about even. And then now I'm gonna go eyeball that and now I'm gonna measure. So I can put my ruler, I'm about 13. So I need this to be six and a half. So I'm gonna smoosh this over, a, I'm gonna move my hoop over just a smidge. Measure it again, six and a half. So it's right where I want it to be. Now, it's eight, four, perfect. So I'm just using my ruler and pressing to feel that I have it in the right spot. And then I also can feel the top to make sure I don't have it crooked, right? I wanna, I'm, I'm using my guide of the top to be um, with this stitching in the top of the bag. All right, so that all of that feels good. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so there it is. Now, once you get that in place, all you have to do is snap and you're done. And it is hooped and it is sturdy and it's not going nowhere. Now canvas really doesn't stretch. So um, I passed the iron on this before to get the wrinkle out from the fold. Um, but that's it, that looks good to me. It looks straight, it looks center. Um, you can see on the inside, the stabilizer is hooped, oops, with it and that's it. So. I saw somebody talking about the hoop. These hoops can be used on any free arm machine. I can use these on my Persona. Not this one though, because it's too big. Um, I use them on my Rakoma. If you have a six needle machine, a 10 needle machine, a 12 needle, they make them for all of the machines. These cannot be used on a flatbed machine, only for the free arm, bigger um, style machines, okay? All right, oh, good night, Con. Thank you for joining us. All right, so that is done. So now let's, um, so this design, we don't need water soluble topper. I know a lot of times I use water soluble topper. Um, this canvas is nice and sturdy. The stitches are not gonna sink into it. Um, and the only one I'd be worried about is the hello, since that's a satin, but it's not gonna sink in it. It's gonna, it's gonna come out fine. And then this one you especially don't need to worry about because it's just a bean stitch on the applique. So I don't think any water soluble topper is needed for this project. Now let's go over to the machine. All right, so this is my baby. This is Roxy, the Rakoma. And she is a 10 needle um, machine. This is actually the smallest machine Rakoma makes. They also make a 15 needle and a 20 needle, which is amazing. But 10 is, 10 is good, <laughs> 10 is good for me. But the 15 one's really cool because it has even bigger hoop than this. So if you're, if you're really into embroidery and you wanna do big things or lots of like patches where you can fill up a, a giant hoop full of patches, um, you can get a bigger 15 needle machine. All right, and this just slides right in. Now you can't see, but the free arm is what makes this so nice because the bottom of my bag is hanging below that, okay? So the only thing between the needle and the bobbin is the stabilizer and the bag itself. So I don't have to worry about stitching the bag to itself. 
I don't have to worry about turning it inside out and holding things out the way. It's beautiful for bags because it can slide right in and you don't even have to babysit it if you're doing just a, um, a all thread design. You could set it and go. It's going to change the thread for you. It's going to move around for you. You really don't have to worry about it. Now, tonight we're doing applique, so we do need to stay by the machine because we got to keep trimming our pieces. So with the machine, um, something that is different compared to flatbed machines is usually we load our design, we put on our hoop, we load the thread, the thread color of choice, and then we start stitching and we change the thread as we go. Sorry, I'm like not in the frame at all. <laughs> Let me back up a little. All right. So um, we're changing the thread. So we just stay by the machine and change the thread. With a multi-needle machine, before you start, you tell the machine which thread or therefore needle you're going to use for each step. So you need to know ahead of time what colors you're stitching everything in and know, have those colors loaded on. They have 10 spool racks in the back that then get threaded and here. Don't let this intimidate you. It comes threaded when you get the machine. It's all done. All you have to do is tie the color that you want. I do a double knot. So like this, this one, I don't have any thread right now on needle four, but it still has the green thread I was using before. So I would put a new spool here. I would tie my new color to this green one in a double knot. And then I would go to needle four, pull that green thread and just pull it and pull it and pull it. And it would go through and my new color would come out and boom, it's threaded. I don't have to go through this. You can, it's not that hard, but it's much easier just to tie it and pull it through. And I do that on the Persona too, the other sing single needle free arm machine. All right. So I have the file loaded. That's step number one. Um, step number two is to choose your hoop. So I would go to design set and down here at the bottom and they have all the hoop sizes and you choose the hoop size. So I have it already set to the eight by 12 and it's in millimeters. So um, you just convert it. Um, so file hoop size. Now you set your colors and that's your needles. So it's very helpful if you have a printout either from Inbrilliance or from Chroma. The machine does come with its own digitizing software. It's called Chroma. So if I would open, if I would have done my putting my letters together in Chroma, I can print out all the steps. You could do the same thing in Inbrilliance and it's going to show you each step and you assign a color for each step. So my first step is hello, and that's just one step. Remember, we merged um, those swirls on, so they're all the same color. So now it's one step. I want that to be that pretty blue color, so I have that set as needle one. Now, everything else is applique. You have a placement stitch, tack down stitch, um, finishing bean stitch. Because this is a bean stitch, you do want your tack down and your finishing stitch to be the same color. It does not matter what color your placement stitch is. I tend to use um, my black and white threads. You can't see them, but I have the big 5,000 meter spools back there. Since I have so much of that, that's what I always use for my placement and tack downs so that I'm not wasting any of my pretty colors that I have smaller spools of. So I had it set up to be black and white earlier. I'm gonna make everything black this time. So I'm changing. So you'll have three steps for each letter and there are six letters in summer. So you're gonna have 15 steps of black for me. That's all needle six. And then that's it. So I'm gonna hit okay. So we have all of our things set. So the last thing you do with any time you use a mighty hoop is you want to trace your design to make sure the design will fall into the area and your needle won't accidentally hit this big heavy magnet frame. We don't want that to happen. So we have to trace it. Before you can trace though, you have to lock the machine and that's turning the embroidery status on. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now it's ready to stitch. My light turned green here, but I'm not gonna stitch yet. I'm gonna trace. And it's always gonna trace with needle one. And you have a couple options. You could just watch it 
I like to pull it down so I could really see where it's going to fall. So I just hold that down with my finger and I press the trace button. And I could see it comes close, but it does not touch anywhere around my frame. I also want to make sure my needle button is right where my mark is. And I see it's a little bit off, so I'm going to go down. Earlier when I hooped it, I had it just right. Because if I move it, I don't want it to, um, to get where. Let me trace it again now. I don't want to take the chance of moving it too low and it hit the, um, the hoop. Yeah, it's still good. Okay, so it's not quite where I wanted it to be, but it's close enough for me. I don't want to take the chance of, of hitting my hoop with my needle. All right, so that is good. So now we're ready to stitch. Um, last thing I wanted to tell you is because we're doing applique, I do want the machine to stop in between every step. With the multi-needle machine, you have to tell it to stop or I'll just keep going, right, with all those steps that we did. So I put my machine on what's called automatic manual. And there's two, there's three choices. There's automatic, where it's just going to switch between all the needles and steps and just keep going until it's done. Automatic manual means it will automatically start stitching, but it will stop at the end of each step. And then manual is you have to press it, I think, to start and press it to, to um I forget what manual is. I have to I have to look that up and remind myself. But automatic manual, it's A slash M when you're doing your needles. So I have that already set there. All right, so we're in embroidery mode. Everything is loaded. Needles are set. We traced it. Everything's good. So I'm going to hit start stitching. And it's going to do that pretty blue color I have for the hello. So now let me zoom in so you can see. And I can turn the light off. And maybe you can see better. Okay, let me go check the comments and the chat. Yes, someone's talking about pre-wound bobbins. Yes, when I got the machine, it came with pre-wound bobbins, and then I bought more. It's the same magnetic back ones that I use for the Prasana. They're called L-Style um, MagnaGlide. They have a magnet back. Um, and Hab and Dash, I think, is the website that I get them from. They used to be on Amazon, but they were sold out for a little while. I don't know if they got them back in stock. All right, so there's our first swoosh. And then it's just going to start stitching the H for the hello. Um, yes, and Mary said the, the box lasts a long time. Yes, it does. It really, really does. All right, and Lucy says the Racoma is on her wish list. It's a fabulous machine. So Christy asks, what machine is this? This is a Racoma EM1010. I have a link for it down below. It's my referral link. Um, and what you do is you click it if you're interested in learning more about the machine. There's a form that you fill out with your name and your phone number. And then someone from Racoma will call you and answer all your questions, tell you all about the machine, tell you about pricing, and they do offer 0% finance. So um, you can do that and talk to someone and, uh, and learn more about it and see if it's the right machine for you. So Brenda asks, can you stitch bags on the PE 800? Yes, you can. It's a little more difficult, but it can be done. And I have a video, I have a couple videos on doing it. Um, the first one we did was a couple Christmases ago. We stitched a bag almost this size. Um, for my mother-in-law as a Christmas present, and we monogrammed it with an alphabet, uh, uh, applique alphabet. We did that on the 800. We turned it inside out. Another time we did it, we used my friend Carol, who I was talking about earlier. She made me a really nice wooden riser for my PE 800, and that allows you to hoop the bag and the bag fall underneath, kind of like what the Racoma is doing now, how the, 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 the part we're not stitching is underneath the uh, free arm. The riser helps you do that. So I have a couple videos on that 
um, you can find on my YouTube channel. Yes, the machine is amazingly quiet. It's for as big and, and a little bit scary as it looks, it, um, it is not bad at all. And, I, and I'm in the upstairs of my house and um, I can go downstairs underneath it and you can barely hear it. All right, Krista asks, what's the max hoop size for this machine? It is eight by 12, eight by 12. Hi, Yvonne. Thanks for watching the Hoop Fest today. Ah, Mary said she got a riser from Carol. Yes, it's a really nice um, thing to have when you have a smaller flatbed machine. Um, it comes in handy with bags, especially. Oh, okay. Brenda said Carol um, has a power outage. Oh, I'm so sorry. So Carol's not with us tonight because of her power outage. So we hope that comes back on for her soon. All right, Beverly asks, how's the maintenance for the Recoma? Surprisingly, very simple. And the, the real thing that I love about that I, that I work with them and got the machine from them is they train you on everything on this machine. So when you get it, you get free virtual training. And if you live in the Miami area, you can go to their headquarters in person and get in-person training. Um, but they train you on everything on how to use the machine and on how to maintain it yourself. So they teach you how to clean it and how to keep it running because these machines are made for industry. They're made for businesses and businesses can't afford to send their machine to a shop to wait two weeks for it to get serviced and, and come back, right? As a business, you can't do that. You're not making any money. So with these machines, they show you how to maintain them and service them yourself so that you don't lose any time on it if you are running a business. So that's something really nice about it. Karen X, how much does it weigh? Ooh, I want to say just the top part on top of the stand was 80-ish pounds, 70 to 80 pounds. Um, it did take two of us to lift it up and put it on the stand. The stand does come with the machine. And um, it, uh, it also comes with a lot of things. So it's not just you get the machine and you got to buy a bunch of stuff to go with it. Um, you get the machine. You get the stand. You get four hoops, 8 by 12. Um, is it 5 by 7, 4 by 4, 2 by 3? Yeah. Um, you also get the cap driver. If you want to do hats, it can do the soft hats like I typically wear, or you can get the structured like trucker hats you can stitch on. It comes with the cap driver and it comes with two, what they call cap rings. And that's these pieces here. I got it. Sorry if I'm in your way right now. I got to remember how this comes off. Yeah. It's been a while since I stitched a hat. I can't get it off. I got another one over here. That's the cap. Yeah, this is the cap ring. So this is what you hoop the cap on. And I have a hooping station set up on my on my desk over here. Um, so you can have a, a hoop a hat, put it on the machine. And while it's stitching, you can hoop another hat. So it, it's very uh, efficient. Comes with two of those. And it comes with the driver part for the machine. So all of that comes with it. It's like a whole package. I think I, and you and you get the digitizing software and the training and they they gave me thread and stabilizer too so it's nice you get everything you need to really get started um do they sell pre-wound bobbins that are different colors yes glide also hab and dash where i get my usual ones from they sell different color pre-wound magnetic backed bobbins now for a flatbed machine you don't want those magnetic backed bobbins you want um the regular style A. And for those, it's just really easy to wind them with the embroidery thread that you want. You can buy some pre-wound, but if you really want a particular color, like to match your top when you're doing it in the hoop project, it's easiest just to wind your own bobbin. All right. Thank you, EJ's daughter. <laughs> we watched Hoop Fest today. Thanks so much. All right, Barbara asks, what speed am I stitching at? So this machine can go up to 1,000 stitches per minute. 
However, I typically, I like to slow it down. So I am using 700 stitches per minute, but it can go up to 1,000. All right. Ah, uh, Debbie, yay, congrats. She bought In Brilliance Essentials today. There is really so much that you can do with it. All right, oops, what do we have? We have a thread break. So I have my blue thread. It's beeping, telling me something's off. So my blue thread came um, out of the needle. All right, so all I'm going to do is pull it a little bit. I'm going to trim the bottom. It's a little frayed. And now this is where my handy dandy tweezers, these came with this machine and I love them. I don't know how I lived without tweezers before that. But all this does is go through a hole here, pull it out, make sure it goes right where it's supposed to. It's, it, goes, it goes up and through here and down. So I just have to make sure it comes out where it's supposed to. Then there is a little hook above the needle and then I just slide it through. I do have a whole unboxing video on this machine um, where I show you, you know, exactly what it was like getting it delivered to my house, taking it out, setting it up, building the stand, well, just putting the stand together. I did it all by myself. I, I, told, <laughs> I told my friends that like no husband supervision was required. I was able to put all of that together. <laughs> the only thing I did need help with was um, lifting it up and putting it on the stand because that was too heavy for me. All right, and I go through threading all the needles and everything. Okay, so I put it back through the needle hole. It should be good to go, but I do need to back up, right? Because I started stitching and it, it lost the thread. So I see where it started over here. So all I do is there's a button here that says T break. That's telling me I had a thread break. And now I have these plus and minus buttons. I can either go ahead stitching or backing up and I'm gonna back up. And I could see on my screen right where I need to go. So I want to back up to where it was stitching before so those kind of um, interlock with each other. So I did that and now I'm going to hit start. And now it picks right back up where I left off. All right, so we're almost done with the hello and then we'll get applique in. Oh, we were talking about essentials. I have several essential videos that should help you. Also, Lisa Shaw and the Embrilliance YouTube channel have excellent videos, excellent videos. All right, yes, Cheryl, I hate it when the thread breaks. <laughs> that happens on all of my machines at some point or another. All right, yes, Krista X, do I have a group for people that buy this machine through my link? Yes. I do have a private Facebook group for Recoma owners that purchase through my referral link. Now, as I told you, you get all of your um, training free from Recoma when you buy the machine. However, I like having the Facebook group. I have several training videos in there myself because sometimes you just forget simple things. And so I made little videos on setting up the design, backing up and going forward stitches, setting up your needles, um, loading the design, rotating it, all those kind of little simple things. I made little short videos in there in the guide section of that group. And that's a great place for when you need help. You know, you always have the Recoma service team that you can contact. But um, usually, like, if you need to know something right away, you can post it in that group and myself or someone else can help you. Um... Okay, Lynette, does the, does the machine come with the laser light? No, that is one thing I wish this machine had. However, the 15 needle does. And I've told the people at Recoma that. I'm like, y'all can't leave out the EM1010. It needs a laser too. <laughs> but the, the bigger machine does come with the laser light. Um, Krista, it comes with a DS, it uses DST format. I think you can also use PES, but I always use DST. All right. So now we are done stitching. Hello. It is all done. So as you see, the machine stopped because I have it on 
uh, automatic manual where it's going to stop after each st stitch. So the next stitch is going to be the placement stitch for the S in summer. So I'm ready for that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And it's going to stitch that out in black. So you're going to be able to see it really good. Now I was looking at my fabrics. And I think I'm going to do something similar to what I did in my test stitch. It's not quite in rainbow order, but I'm using a rainbow of colors. I did change a couple. I picked a different fabric for yellow and I picked a different fabric. One thing I really like about this font is like any letter, like an A, B, E that has a hole in the middle, you can, the hole is done with a new piece of fabric, which I think is super cute. So this is a piece of actually scrap fabric from another sip and stitch project where I already had the heat and bond on the back of it. Um, and I saved it because I had, I needed a big old piece but I trimmed a lot of it away and I'm like, I can use this for something else. And sure enough, I can. So I am, I don't know if you could see the S there. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it, right? You see the S? I'm just gonna place that fabric right on top of that S like this. And I'm just gonna look at it, make sure it goes, it covers the whole thing. And now you can use tape, you can use a chopstick, a pencil, whatever you want to hold this in place. I like um, my paper Kimberbell tape, but when I did this earlier, I was able just to hold it like that. And now I'm gonna hit start. And now this is the tack down stitch. All right. So this is the part where the, this is why you need the machine to stop for each step because you need it to stop to place the fabric. And now I need to stop it, take it off and trim it. So you can see, oops, where am I? Can you see that S? We're gonna go over to the craft table if you can. All right. All right, so we are on the craft table. Let me pick these up because I have bad luck with losing these and they get stuck to the bottom of hoops. Make sure I didn't already lose one. All right, so here's my hooped bag. I have my S. I did it in black because that's what I want my final project to be. I like the black with the, um, when you're using multiple color fabrics. I like the outline to be all black. So now I'm going to use my handy dandy applique scissors. I have a link for those on the Sip and Stitch homepage, which that is in the description box below. And there is no right or wrong way to do this. Some people freak out about having their cutting done perfectly. It really, to anyone that doesn't embroider, they're going to think it looks amazing no matter how you cut it. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, all your stitching does, all your cuts don't need to be the same millimeter away from the stitching. The whole thing is that you just want to cut around that tack down stitch and trim. And these scissors are great for getting in those tight spaces. Now, these kind of applique letters tend to be very tricky to trim. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And the heat and bond on the back of the fabric really, really makes cutting it nice and easy and clean because it's not fraying um, when you're cutting it. I need a little bit more light in here, huh? Let me put on my other my seal and fan light. That might help a little bit. Okay, it's getting dark outside now. <laughs> All right, so I am just cutting this. Now we talked about this earlier today on Hoop Fest. Some ways of getting around this tricky cutting is by using a machine like a Scan and Cut, um, a Silhouette, a Cricut. Um, you can pre-cut your applique shapes, letters on those machines. And I've done that in one of my videos I have on my, my 
YouTube channel. And I actually have the shirt that I did it with. Where is it at? I showed, did I show it? Yeah, I showed it earlier on HoopFest. We did a video making this shirt. And I pre-cut all of these letters on my silhouette before stitching it. Um, and it was it made it a lot easier. However, because this is a bean stitch, placing it in the exact right spot, you have your placement stitch as a guide, but putting that fabric right where it needed to be so that you have the same amount of fabric on the outside of the bean stitch was tricky. So it, it, no matter which way you go, it's still a little bit tricky. Getting in this S, in this little hole here is fun. Um, and that's where these little tiny scissors work really well. So I'm just gonna cut down the middle and I'm just constantly turning my hoop to make it a direction that's comfortable to cut. So sorry if I'm making you car sick, moving it all the time. <laughs> And because that spot's really close together, it's okay if the um, if you don't see any white of the canvas in between this and this. But there's your S. Now, we're going to go back to the machine. That was just the tack down stitch. Now it's going to go do the final stitch. And that's going to be a nice thicker bean stitch. And then we're going to do that for each letter. And that's, that's what we're doing. So let me switch you back over to the machine and then I'll see if you got any questions. Oops, drop my tweezers. All right, so every time I load it on the machine, I gotta make sure the handle's there and the bag is open so that it goes in the, under the free arm correctly. Clip it in. Now I'm always gonna make sure my bag is there, nothing's in the way. And now I gotta move my handle like that. So that's just me being a little extra because I don't want anything to get messed up. All right, now I'm gonna hit start. Now it's gonna do that thicker bean stitch around the S and then we'll move on to the next letter. All right, oh, Brenda's leaving. Bye, Brenda. Thanks for joining us. Yes, Karen, so the, the Brother Scan and Cut has a scanner which makes it much easier and you can save on materials. Yes, I totally agree. The other thing I love about the Brother Scan and Cut is if you're using like a, a particular pattern or directional fabric, you really get to pick and choose exactly how your applique piece is gonna fall, right? So all the things I'm using tonight are basic and very repetitive, but if you're using something that has a character or something special that you want to fall right in the middle of the applique, the Brother Scan and Cut makes that much easier. All right. Um, let's see, Chantel X. Does the Rakoma have a different size arm? And I'm guess you're asking compared to the persona. No, I think the arms are the same size. The thing that's different is the space here is bigger so that it accommodates that 12 inches width of a, of a hoop. Okay, we're done stitching the the thicker black on the S. So I'm gonna hit start, and now it's gonna show me the placement stitch for the U. And then we go on. Okay, so Diana asked about, so when you have your embroidery file and you wanna use it on your Cricut or your Scan and Cut, Scan and cut is the easiest because you can literally um, in, import the PES file and pull the placement stitch and, um, and put it right in the machine. Cricut is a little different. With Cricut, you're going to want to use in Brilliance. Let me get my blue here. Okay, so this is my blue. Um, I already pulled off the heat and bond paper on the back. And um, this is little and right size, so I don't even need to hold it or tape it. It's just right where I want it to be. 
I'm gonna hit start. So with a Cricut, and also if you have the basic version of Silhouette Studio, you're gonna wanna use in Brilliance. And in Brilliance, you can save an SVG cut file based off your applique placement stitch, which is really cool. I don't think I have a video on that, but I know several of my other embroidery YouTuber friends have videos on it. And um, I think the Embrilliance YouTube channel has a video on it. I have the business edition of Silhouette Studio software. And in that software, it allows me to put the PES file directly in. So I didn't even have to use Embrilliance. I opened up the embroidery file in Silhouette Studio. All right, back over here. And now we have our U and I'm just trimming just like I did before. Again, I'm turning. <laughs> so getting down in here is a little tricky, but not too bad. And we were talking about on a hoop fest today. I didn't, it's not something that crossed my mind before, but I know a lot of left-handed people have issues with needing to have left-handed scissors. And because these are, I would say, ambidextrous, dexterous in the tweezer shape, it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed. They feel and work really well. Now, another thing I wanted to tell you about, if you did want all these letters to be the same material, you are still going to want to do it step by step like I am now, one letter at a time. I have tried doing a font similar to this with just one long sheet of material, and I did all the placement stitch at one time. I put my big piece of material, I did all the tack down stitch at one time, and the letters were super close, so I had a lot of fun getting in between those letters. It can be done, but it's it's pretty tedious. So if you're just been beginning with applique, I recommend you do one piece at a time like I'm doing tonight. All right, there's the U. So we're going to put it back on, do the thicker bean stitch, and then move on to the next. Let me move you over. Okay. And I just got my little system for putting it on. Make sure that's out the way. This is out the way. Everything's ready and go. So now our thick line. Okay. Yeah, Janet says she likes the raw edge. I'm a fan of the raw edge too. However, I do think the heat and bond makes it nice. Um, and even though it's it's still going to fray eventually when you wash it, the heat and bond still keeps it to where it's it's not like the fabric's falling apart on the edges. But I'm, I'm a big fan of this. This is, this is, I describe it as more vintage style because it, the satin, I think, is the more traditional. Um, but I like going with other types of finishing stitches. 
since you said I have not seen anyone work those tweezer scissors like me. <laughs> I like my tweezer scissors. They work really well for me. Like, I guess I've, I've used them for such a long time. Now, my friend Bethany has the whole Kimberbell set of scissors. Um, and that one comes with a tweezer one. And it also comes with a duckbill one. And I think another kind I'm not familiar with. She likes the duckbill one. She told me they're really good. So everyone has their own favorite. So you got to try them out and see which works for you. So this is Lizzie, guys. She is the digitizer of um, a kid's creation of the font we're using tonight. So she says she always likes to keep a little extra fabric outside the bean stitch. Yes, I'm the same way, Lizzie. All right. So that is our placement stitch for the M. Oh, I don't need to take it off. I'm not thinking. We just need to put the fabric down. Okay. All right, so the M I'm doing in yellow. I did a new yellow this time. This is more of, I don't know, it's kind of floral. I liked how it looked. So I'm going to do this yellow for the M this time. And I'm just placing it right on top. And go. Ooh, Cindy said she won the Kimberbell scissor set, and they're really nice. Yeah, Bethany has told me she loves them. I need to get it. I, I just keep putting it off because, you know, I don't need more things. <laughs> um, yes, I've heard the Ginger um, uh, brand is also really good. Am I saying that right, Ginger? I think so. Okay, now I'm pulling it off. I got ahead of myself there. All right. And trim. Okay. Oh, I have not had a sip yet this evening. Everyone take a sip. <laughs> um, I liked it a few weeks ago. If you if you you're new here, a few weeks ago, my good friend Amy, who doesn't live far from me, and she's also a crafter. But she doesn't do embroidery. She does. She makes pretty cups, which I can't turn it because I'll spill my drink. But she made me this pretty epoxy koozie that she makes cookies. She was over visiting. She brought her daughter over to um, play with my, uh, have a sleepover with Abigail. And I told her to stay. I'm like, come up in my room with me. You could hang out while I do my video. <laughs> and she just sat at my desk and, um, and she helped me and um, helped me like answer questions. She told me questions people had, you know, while I was working. And she also, like, kept handing me my drink <laughs> the whole time. She's like, take a sip. <laughs> but Amy's not here, so I keep forgetting to take a sip. Until I get thirsty. All right. I'm talking too much because I know I talk too much. But it's fine. All right. Yeah, I feel like if I can get in between these little letters, if I wanted to do this all one color, it would come out fine. I think it would, um, getting in between the, um, the letters would be no different than getting in between these tight spaces on the, um, uh, and the M and the U and everything. But I like the, um, I like the multicolors. It's fun. I'm just going to go right up the middle there. And now that makes it a little easier to go in the sides. So what else I had to tell you? Ooh, so if you're on my email newsletter, you saw some pictures of my future craft room. So I'm going to have to take another picture now because now I need y'all to help me pick floors. So... We have an upstairs of our house. It has three rooms. And sorry if you've heard this story before. But I have my craft room. My girls share a room. And I had a guest room because my dad was living with me because his house got flooded for the hurricane last year. But luckily, 
he he gutted his house and rebuilt everything and it's gorgeous and he moved out a couple months ago so we are renovating the upstairs of our house and my girls are well one girl is ready to have her own room elise is like she wants everything to stay the way it is (laughs) um she's like i don't want a new room and abigail's like get a new room um anyway the girls are just gonna have their own room now and part of that whole deal is i'm moving my craft room to the bigger room that my girls are currently sharing. And this room will become Elise's room. So we um, decided to do, if we're going to do that, we're going to do it big. I guess you could say go big or go home. And we are, I have popcorn ceilings in my house that I do not like. And all the rooms need to be, I want, I want all the rooms painted gray. And I want to pull the carpet out and put vinyl plank floors um so we emptied we moved the girls out of the their room and now they're sharing the guest room and emptied the room completely had some people come in scrape the ceiling and paint the walls so they finished all that today so now we're ready to tear the carpet up and put the floors but i have to pick a floor So I posted pictures on my newsletter of the before and after of the room. So now I'll have a new picture for you this week on the newsletter of the paint being finished and all the floor samples. And then hopefully maybe if we're lucky and the flooring is in stock that we choose, we'll start flooring next weekend. And then we're going to move all of this to another room. That's going to be real fun. Anyone that would like to volunteer and come help me, I will take your help. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right yeah so kathy was just asking how's the new craft room going so yes yeah, super excited about it and i am taking this opportunity to really organize all of my mess because i keep collecting crafts and i keep stashing them in whatever hole i can find in this room so in the new room i'm gonna have a wall of cabinets which will have a little counter space too, which will help um, with storing some things like printers. Like I, right now, I don't have a place to put my sublimation printer. Um, so I was thinking I could keep that on there, like my cam, uh, snap the press, my table press. And then I'm thinking about getting another printer. And I have to ask y'all's opinion on it. Um, I'm thinking about getting a new toy. Because I like sublimation, but then sublimation has its limits. And I want to try something a little fancier. So if I get another printer, I can put that on that on that counter too. (laughs) All right, we're stitching placement. What color is next? We're gonna do purple next. So I got I'm gonna have a wall of cabinets. I'm gonna still use my big L desk that me and Chris built during the quarantine when the pandemic first started. We built this big giant desk that's across from this machine. I got a video on us building it too. It was fun. Fun project. I mostly supervised and painted. (laughs) It was really fun to build something together. And I'm also going to build a new craft table because this craft table is looking a little rough. The one that I'm, um, I'm using now. So I'm going to show all, all this stuff to y'all, either in videos or in pictures on the blog or an email. And then I want it to be organized nice because um, my friend Bethany, who has the YouTube channel, Beth, Beth Adili, um, she has a beautifully organized craft room and I want my room to look like hers. All right. All right. Oh, Janie said vinyl plank is a good choice. Yeah, I want, because eventually we're going to do all of this to the downstairs of the house too, where we're going to scrape the ceilings, paint the walls, change the floors. And I want to have the same floors throughout the whole house. And so I want it to be able to go in my kitchen. The bathrooms, I might leave tile, but I want it to go in my kitchen. And maybe like the, the little half bath, it can go in there. Um... 
So that's that's one of the reasons why I want vinyl. Because right now we have like a mixture of laminate and tile and carpet everywhere. Um, let's see. Karen said Epson. Okay, so we were talking about sublimation. I have an Epson EcoTank printer. The printer um, is was made and meant to be a regular old household inkjet printer. However, I never put the ink that came with it in it. I put sublimation ink in it. And we did a whole sip and stitch on this last summer. Um, and I made a video on, you know, qu uh, converting the printer, even though it's you're not converting anything, you just put different ink in it. Um, I made a video on all this last summer. So Epson now makes an eco tank that comes with the sublimation ink. So they have their own sublimation ink. I have not tried it, but I've, I've seen other people and it looks like it's good. All right, Joanne asks what color we're painting. We're painting the whole house agreeable gray. It's a color from Sherwin-Williams. And my friend who just built a house, I keep looking at her house. I'm like, ooh, that looks nice. <laughs> so it's a nice neutral color and goes with everything. And then like I told the girls, they can decorate their rooms with what they're liking right now. Because like, for instance, if I would paint Elise, she'd probably want a teal room. But like two, a year ago, she would want a pink room. And now she hates pink. Apparently she's way too old for pink because she is six now. Um, so I told them, I'm like, we're doing gray. Curtains and pillows and comforters and pictures on the walls. You make those all the stuff you like. And so when you're older... And you change your mind. I'm not painting anything. I'm just changing your pillow and your comforter. <laughs> and your pictures. Much easier. Oh, good night, Star. Have a good weekend. Yeah, I'm super I'm super excited about all this. This is stuff I've been waiting for forever. Um to do and the housing market is crazy over here and we could sell our house and make a nice profit of much more than what we paid for it however to go buy another house or to build a house is going to cost two to three times more than I think it should <laughs> as, as, as in like two to three times more than what it costs you know, two years ago, even, you know, even probably less than two years ago. So I told Chris, we have a nice house. We stay where we're at. We have a nice neighborhood and we could just fix up our house a little bit, much cheaper than buying a new house or building one. Going back over here. Okay, loaded it. Everything's out the way. Almost done, guys. Sorry, this is kind of repetitive. I picked a long word to applique. <laughs> I should have picked a three-letter word. <laughs> um, but we just got two more letters left. Oh, Christy did repost gray. I looked at that color, too. That was a pretty color. All right, Kathy got the Epson F170, and she likes it, so that's really good. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. Thank you, Cecilia. I appreciate it. Yes, Cindy, property is high everywhere. Ooh, Karen has a fun craft room. Gray floor, white furniture, and teal walls. Nice. I'm going to move my teal curtains that I have behind my Ricoma here. I'm going to move those over to my new room. Yay! Cheryl got an Outback sewing cabinet for her embroidery machine from um, Sewing Machines Plus. Can't wait to get it and organize it. That's going to be fun. I, there's a cabinet I want to get to. Um, 
and I want I also want to get another sewing machine which is a pro I have a problem because I, I heard I don't need another sewing machine but I want one <laughs> and I measured everything and it fit perfectly in my new room um I want to get a Juki um what is it 2010Q I'm pretty sure that's the one I want to get and I want it for quilting and to make bags. Um, I watch, oops, not sticking my, all right, I got a little thread caught up in there, but I'm gonna get it out of the way. Um, I watch Jess at Oakla Roots and she makes um, bags and I love watching her and I wanna make all the things she makes. And I think a Juki, um, 2010Q would be a good bag. I'm trying to get this white thread out of the way, but it also frayed, so I'm just trimming it. Um, and I found a really cute, small sewing cabinet on Sewing Machines Plus that would fit perfectly under my counter height L desk that I have now. It would like roll perfectly underneath it so when I'm not using that sewing machine I could have it in the cabinet rolled underneath my counter height desk and then when I want it I could pull it out and flip it open and because I don't have anything in my room that is table height normal sitting height everything is tall you need a bar stool or standing tables so I, I know at some point I'm going to want to sit down and sew and I thought having that would be convenient because I could roll it away when I'm not using it and I could pull it out when I want it. All right, so next piece of applique. This one I didn't peel that paper off the back, so I just wanted to show you that. Super easy, you peel it off. And this is my E. And it's a pretty tie-dye fabric, but I don't know if I have it placed good to where you're going to see the tie-dye well in the letter. I take the light area. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Also, I'm going to show you something now. So the E has a little hole, has another piece of applique for the hole. So I'm not going to pull it off the machine. I am going to... It doesn't matter if you, because this is a bean stitch, it doesn't matter that I take it off and trim it now or trim it after the bean stitch, right? So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the bean stitch. And then I'm going to do the hole for the E. Then I'm going to take it off and trim everything at the same time. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right, Karen. Yes, that, that Juki I mentioned is a straight stitch only machine. And it's um, it can stitch through like a lot of layers of fabric. Yeah, Christy said I'm going to want to get it to sit when my kids are grown. <laughs> yes. Um, I know. I would like to win one too. Walk by faith. <laughs> oh, Janine has it. It's heavy and she loves it. It's great for pilt, uh, piecing quilts and quilt as you go. Ooh, I'm glad I figured out that acronym all by myself. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, yay. Chantel has it too. Great. And I've heard a lot of good things about that machine. All right. So that's the E. Now we're going to stitch the middle of the E. That's placement. I got a little tiny piece of blue fabric. Peel the heat and bond off. Did I make it? Did I cut my piece big enough? Yeah. Okay. Stitch. So that's tacked down. I'm going to go ahead and stitch the final stitch too. And then I'm going to take it off and trim all that. And then we'll do the last letter. Lizzie makes a great point. So usually when I've done applique alphabets, I cut out the, the middle. And that is tricky. 
However, she was saying that you can still do that if you want to. You can not put anything down there. Uh, when I was doing the that placement step, I could skip that placement and uh, even the tack down too and have this and then stick your, your scissors, it would have been in the orange fabric, and just cut that orange fabric out if you wanted that hole to be the color of the canvas of the bag. So you do still have that option. Thanks for bringing that up because I was not thinking about that. Oh, Anne got lucky. She was thinking about buying a sewing cabinet, and then her friend gave her one. Perfect timing. Any of my friends want to give me a sewing cabinet? <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, I think, a new addition to the craft room I might get. And then that, that printer. Let me tell you about the printer. Because it's, it's a bit much. But So, sublimation is awesome. And it is not that expensive to get started with it. However, its limitations are you have to really press it on mostly polyester fabric. The more polyester the percentage of the fabric, the more vibrant the colors are. Um, so it needs to be on polyester and it needs to be on something light. You can't put it on a black shirt and it does not print white, right? Um, so one way people got around that is they started bleaching shirts. They'll bleach, they'll take a red shirt and bleach a hole in the middle to make it white. So then you can see the design you sublimate on it. And then they'll put like, um, I've seen people like take a pink brush and, and um, speckle the, the bleach all over the shirt to give it spots, which is cute, but I, I wouldn't want all of my shirts to be like that. So the thing that I'm looking at that is a workaround so that if I wanted to do a really colorful dimensional design that you can't, you know, do with vinyl, it'd be like layers on layers on layers. Um, but I wanted to maybe press on a black shirt and it show white in it is something called a white toner printer. And Recoma makes one and I'm looking at getting one of those and uh, and they have it they have like a whole bundle like it um it's the printer and you get the heat press and you get software for it so that might be a new addition and then I can end the cool thing about that it prints white and you can press it on cotton shirts so then I wouldn't have to worry about having a certain kind of shirt to put the designs on it can it can print on anything it can be heat pressed on anything. And there's a lot of ideas I have on using it and incorporating it with embroidery. So we'll see how that goes. This is tedious. Okay, almost done. Yay, isn't that cute? That is cute. All right, last one. Okay. How am I on time? I haven't even looked at my watch. This is why I went over on everything on Hoop Fest today because I take too long to do anything. <laughs> okay, last one. All right, there's my R. Okay. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Bonnie said, is that a D DTG printer? No, a DTG printer is a direct to garment printer. So like you actually put the shirt in instead of paper. Those are fancy. Those are a little too fancy for me. Um, also, those are really expensive, like two times as much as this embroidery machine. Um, but it is a really cool option. Um, this is just called a white toner printer. Um, and it kind of just looks like a, a, like maybe a more office kind of printer. Um, and it's, it's bigger than my, my Epson, but not huge like a DTG printer. Um, 
Let's see. Elisa says, did you know that you can embroider a design in white and then sublimate the color into the embroidery? Ooh, so you would have to embroider. Okay, yeah, because embroidery thread is polyester. So if you did white polyester embroidery thread, the color from the sublimation would get picked up from that. That's a cool idea. You should play with that. Also, you could applique a piece of polyester fabric. That's something I played around with. All right, so last letter. I'm going to do like what I did before. I'm going to go ahead and do the tack down and the finishing stitch and then take it off. So I don't have to put it back and forth a couple times. Let's see, I'm looking at the chat. All right. So that's the final stitch. Okay. Um, Christy said, is it the Racoma RI100? I think that's their DTG printer. The one I'm looking at is like the Lumen, uh, Luminaire Luminous 200. No, Karen, it's not limited to just shirts. Um, I think there's lots of things that you could press um, those designs on, including cups and stuff too. So I need to learn more about it. I have some research to do, but that's what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, Bonnie puts the, that brings up a really good point. So some people don't like the feel of the polyester shirts. The issue I have with the polyester shirts is that they tend to what you call pile um, very easily and they get um, like little fuzzies on them. So like the shirt I'm wearing tonight, we sublimated. Um, last summer, this, this was the project we did and I love the shirt and I wear it for, you know, almost every sip and stitch and I wash it and it's, it's getting to where it's got like all the little fuzzies on it. And you have less of that with the cotton shirt. All right. There's our last letter. Let me take a sip. Mm. All right. Wait, I'm reading comments. All right. Yay, Janine said that this has been so good. She's a newbie at embroidery, so thanks for joining us. And if you are new to embroidery, and, you know, there's a lot to learn, um, I have a whole post a whole page on my website. Let me find it for you. I have a little thingamabob. So this is my website. And um, when you go to it and you scroll down, um, there is a spot that says new to embroidery start here. And you click on that and I got 10 posts, like a countdown of all kinds of things that will help you when you're new from picking a machine, like which machine you should pick if you haven't bought one already, to stabilizers, to designs, to applique, to embrilliance, um, hooping, all that fun stuff. And then, um, of course, showing you our Facebook group and Sip and Stitch, so all, all the videos and stuff. But there's, I made a really nice, I think, simple thing to follow so that it puts all those things in one place for you. So check that out if you're new to embroidery because those were all the questions that I had when I started. So I wanted to make it easy and all in one place for someone to find. All right. Ooh, Norma. Um, Norma and Walk of Faith, y'all won something at Hoop Fest. Tell me what you won. I didn't able, I wasn't able to watch the end because as soon as I was done, I had to go bring Abigail to dancing school again <laughs> for practice. So I didn't get to see who won the big giveaway. Well, he always has like tons of giveaways, but who won the big dream uh, room giveaway? Tell me, tell me. I have to go back and rewatch the replay. 
All right. Yay, that is done. Okay, so that is it for stitching. We trimmed. So let me plug my little mini iron in because I have one last step after we take it off. And that is to iron all my little letters and activate that heat and bond so it's nice and fused to the canvas. But we can go ahead and take it off the hoop. Ooh, Carol Lombardi won. Congrats. Um, Norma won some bags. And the next name won the Juki. Oh, man, Nora. So close. So close. But I'm glad you got some bags. All right. That's wonderful for, um, for Carol. Um, I heard last year, I want to say, when he did, like, Quilt Fest or Hoop Fest, he, I mean, he gives away a ridiculous amount of things. I think he told me the lady that won the first time he did that big room giveaway, she literally had to add on to her house, add on a room to be able to fit all the things that she won. How crazy is that? I want to have that problem. <laughs> all right. So inside, all we got to do is pull the tear away. It comes off so easy and you don't need to get it all out in between all those letters nobody is scoping out the inside of your bag to see what the back of your embroidery looks like unless you are an embroiderer <laughs> we tend to do that but nobody else cares and you're gonna have all your beach towel and your sunscreen and all your goggles and pool toys in this bag so, it does not matter. Okay, there we go. Pulled it all out. Oops. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Okay, so that's it. I actually throw my stabilizer in my recycle bin. It's like paper. I think they should be able to recycle it. All right, now I have this little mark. I'm going to remove that with my Tide pen. Comes right off. And last, I'm going to iron my letters. Now, if I was still in the hoop, that this iron works great because it fits in even a 4x4 four four hoop. Um, when you're doing something with a satin stitch, you do want to iron it before you do that last satin stitch. With bean, sometimes zigzag, blanket, I find those don't matter as, as much because um, you shouldn't get any wrinkles um, in it. But satin, you want to iron it while it's still in the hoop before you do that satin stitch. And that's what I did today on the, on the demonstration on Hoop Fest when we did our little applique of uh, the satin frame. I ironed that pink fabric down before we did that. All right, so we have a beach bag. What do y'all think? All right, dun dun dun. Hello, Summer. How cute is that? I love it. Yay, I think the girls are really gonna like this too. And we are going to the beach next month and I will be bringing this, so. How do y'all like it? All right, thank you, yay, I'm glad y'all like it. It's so cute. A applique makes everything cute, everything. And the thing I love about it is any of y'all at home can stitch this out and it can, you put your own spin on it and it looks like a whole nother design. And that's based on the fabrics that you use. If someone used the same color across, if someone didn't use another color for the E and cut it out instead, um, if someone did a whole nother like color scheme and not rainbow, um, and then different color for hello, um, different color for the outline stitch. The awesome thing about it is you could take the same design and I could do it on another bag and it looked totally different. You customize it to your liking. So that's one of the reasons why I love applique. So yay. All right, so I see Chantel. She says, I need these fonts. Yes, you do. <laughs> I have links for them down below. I love glitter, Bailey, 
applique alphabet. Um, Lizzie was nice enough to offer us a 35% off coupon off your total purchase on her website. That coupon, however, does expire tonight, which is June 17th of 2022. Um, however, I have a link for her Facebook group tomorrow in her Facebook group. She's posting another coupon code. So go join her Facebook group and then you'll be up to date on every time she does coupons all the time in her, in her Facebook group. And they're usually on the weekends when we're not busy. Well, at least most of us aren't and we have time to sit in our craft room and sew. Um, <laughs> so go join her Facebook group so you can get more coupon codes. Um, and the coupon code for tonight, um, if you're watching live, is Carly, K-A-R-L-I-E. That gets you 35% off. Yay. All right. Ooh, we're late tonight, guys. It's almost nine o'clock. Sorry, I'm so slow. I should have picked a three-letter word. <laughs> we would have been done a long time ago. <laughs> so what's a good three-letter summer word? Hmm. I don't know. But yay. All right. Norma's asking a good question. And so this is for my CF fans membership group. Um, let me look at a calendar. Okay, so. We have Sip and Stitch here on YouTube. Um, I have a membership group called CF Fans. It's, a, um, it's through um, a company called Creative Fabrica that I work with. And it's $9 a month. And with it, you get a private Sip and Stitch. And we do it over Zoom. So it's a lot more interactive. You can turn your microphone on and say, hey, Carly. How did you do this? And we can stop. We could talk. We, you know, we go through everything. Um, and also we've been having a lot of fun focusing particularly on using Embrilliance, using uh, the Stitch Artist Program in Embrilliance to digitize our own designs. So today's the 17th. We are going to come back and have Sip and Stitch here on YouTube and Facebook next Friday. I think... Monday the 27th or Tuesday the 28th is when we will have our private Zoom Sip and Stitch for CF fans. Um, I have to see. Well, it looks like Monday is better because Chris gets off of work earlier. <laughs> I'm looking at my husband's work schedule. <laughs> um, I usually do them when I when I get home from work at 5, uh, 530. Um, so let's shoot for Monday, June 27th. At 5.30, I will post it in this, on the CF Fans homepage and have the Zoom link on there. And, um, and we'll talk more on the CF Fans page on what kind of class y'all want to do this month. Um, let's see. And then we also do a free embroidery design um, for members each month as well. All right. So christy x the facebook group so the facebook which which facebook group are you asking about i have one that's free and open to everyone lizzie over at a kids um i'm losing my track um oh my goodness i lost it um the designer tonight um she has her own facebook group and um a kids creation um she has her own Facebook group. That's where you get some coupon codes. And then we were talking about my CF fans. That's a membership group. So let me know which one you're talking about. Hot, fun. Those are some good three-letter words. There we go for a beach bag. A kid's creation, yes. Um, fun, sun, wet. <laughs> that would be fun. All right, so Chantel asks, is it Sip and Stitch next week too? Yes, we have Sip and Stitch next week because actually we were supposed to have one last Friday and then Abigail had to dance. My whole life revolves around Abigail dancing. That is my life. My husband complains about it every day. <laughs> it's like, she's going again. I'm like, yes, and I have to bring her. Um, and he's complaining. Um, so we were supposed to have Sip and Stitch last week if we would have been on schedule. So I did it tonight instead. I want to keep my same schedule because it falls nicely around my family's birthdays and holidays. So we're going to still have Sip and Stitch next week like we were supposed to. Um, next week's project I have not picked out yet. Surprise, surprise. I, you know, I'm very last minute. Um, however, I do know we're going to do it on the PE 800 um, 5 by 7 embroidery machine. So if you have a smaller machine, this is, will show you a project on that machine. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 4th of July themed design or project. I haven't figured out what I want to do yet. I was talking with Bethany about it and she had some good ideas and I already forgot them. So I will post what that next sip and stitch will be. Ways to find out what I'm doing. The best way is to be on my email newsletter. I have a link for that. The Facebook group, I post in there. And then my website, um, which has the sip and stitch homepage, shows you what we're doing and what supplies you need. And next week, the sip and stitch will be again at seven o'clock central. That's when we started tonight. They're always on a Friday at seven central. And then I think we'll see how July goes. I think it falls right where we'll do the every other Friday again. We'll be back on our two week schedule. And I'm going on vacation at the end of July, but it falls. Sip and stitch won't fall that week. So it should work out. <laughs> Yay, it's Karen's birthday. We're going to sing you happy birthday, Karen. All right. Yay. I'm glad y'all like the bag. Ooh, Mary had a good one. Do a garden flag. That's a good idea. And we can do that on the five by seven hoop. Um, Cheryl asks, how do you get the newsletter? I have a link for it in the description box below. I think it's towards the bottom, but just keep scrolling. You'll see sign up for a newsletter. Yes. <laughs> so they said, sip is a three letter word. Yay. <laughs> we could did sip and applique and then do and stitch in a different font. Um, that would be fun. Oh, yes. Anne brings up a good point. Sunday is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. We appreciate y'all. We'll be celebrating my husband and my dad and my stepdad and my father-in-law. We got lots of dads. Um, and so thanks to all of them. And I, um, if you're looking for a last minute present to make your father figure in your life, um, we did a sip and stitch last year. If you go look on the YouTube channel, we embroidered koozies. Um, like you put a, a can, a beer, um, but we had some really cute koozie designs. Um, and we did that last year for Sip and Stitch. That was a really fun project and it's super quick to stitch out. Um, so go check that out if you're looking for a, um, a last minute Father's Day present to do. I love Krissa. It's the anniversary of her 29th birthday. Yay! <laughs> Happy 29th birthday. <laughs> I am staying, I'm currently staying 39. I turned 39 this month, oh, last month. And um, yeah, I'll be celebrating my, the anniversary of my 39th in, uh, birthday every, every year from now on. <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, we have to, thank you, Patricia. She said, good night, let me know if I win. Thank you for the reminder that I need to do a giveaway because <laughs> you know I was gonna forget. So stick around. We'll do the giveaway right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So how do I do this? I share. I share. I share. I share. Sharing. Okay. So we have 116 entries into tonight's giveaway. And that is to win. We're going to pick two people. Um, that is to win a sewing mat from Sewing Machines Plus. So winner number one is... It's going to be funny if it's Patricia. Kathy! Yay, Kathy! So, Kathy, you know my email. Email me um, tonight or tomorrow, and I will need your mailing address, and we are going to directly ship you that sewing mat, and you can put that under any sewing machine or um, flatbed embroidery machine. All right, so Kathy's our first winner. Let's draw again. Who's going to win? Stacy. All right, Stacy. Let me write your name down. I need a pen and a paper. Look, I got some heat and bond paper right here. All right, Stacy. I'm going to put up my email for you in a second. All right. And that is Stacy on YouTube. And let me find my email thing. Okay, Stacy, I want you to email me at hello at carlybell.com. Tell me you won 
um, the sewing mat tonight on Sip and Stitch and give me your mailing address and we're going to directly ship you that sewing mat and tell me what color you want. Oh, Blaine, Blaine sent me some pictures. I can't let's see if I can show you my phone. Um, he's got new colors. So I have pink ones because I have a whole pink and mint kind of color scheme going on here. Um, but he came out with a really pretty teal one. So if you like teal, I'm going to go hold, hold my phone close to the camera so you can see it. So this is what the mat looks like. Whoop. Need to focus, focus, focus. There we go. Nope, I messed it up. There's the mat. So it's turned sideways. It says Sewing Machine Plus on the bottom. And you, it comes in like four different sizes. So you can go look at their website and see what size is best for you based on your machine. And then the other one he got is this really cute, it's kind of a, um, a darker red pattern with, it looks like hibiscus flowers, but some kind of flowers on it. And then Sewing Machines Plus is written in teal. So those are some new colors they have. You can look on the website and then they have their other array of colors, which is pink and gold and blue. Those are the ones I could think of off the top of my head. Um, but Kathy and Stacy, go look, tell me the color you want. Tell me the size you want and your mailing address. All right. Yay. Congrats, ladies. All right. Karen said she bought the teal mats. Cherry Blossom. That's the other one. Cute. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, thanks for sticking around so long. Sorry, this was an extra long one. Um, if you're watching the replay, um, check out all the links below to get everything, all the supplies and info you need on the things we use tonight. And what I wanted to say. Oh, if coupon code does expire. So go join Lizzie's Facebook group, A Kid's Creation. Facebook group and you'll get more coupon codes in case you're watching the replay later on. Okay. All right. Thanks so much guys. Have a great weekend. Happy father's day. And I will see you next Friday, the 27th. And we're going to sing, I think it was Karen, happy birthday. And, and Krista too, we're going to celebrate her happy, her anniversary of her birthday. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Take care.